All right, let's talk about the sales cycle. A salesperson should try for closing from the beginning of every sale. Charles Roth says this, make every call a sales call. So there's always going to be an opportunity for you to be able to nudge a little further uh, with somebody to talk about your company, what it is that you do, what it is that you offer, the ways that you can help somebody in their business. Uh, it's, it's important. You, know, you don't want to hound people, but you do want to make it as part of that uh, conversation that you have in such a way that uh, you're building the relationship, you're you're looking at the best interest of the customer in mind, uh, but again, recognizing you're a salesperson and you've got a job to do. To understand the dynamics of closing, you have to begin at the beginning and follow the steps towards closing. This is what is known as the sales cycle, and there's seven steps here. Prospecting, qualifying, needs analysis, presentation, answering objectives, closing, and relationship management. And we will talk about all of those things in detail as we go through this chapter. The perfect customer. Mark McCormick says, in sales, you get the customers you deserve. So that talks about the motivating factor in the way that you relate to a customer, uh, that you uh, successfully reach out to that customer and, and provide solutions that he or she is going to be able to use and if you win them over, uh, it's the fact that you have earned uh, that customer uh, as part of your business. McCormick, describe, uh, McCormick describes rather the perfect customer as a friend, a decision maker, and someone who likes what is being proposed and will form an alliance with you as the salesperson to overcome the forces of resistance. Again, a lot of talking about the fact that uh, the sales relationship is just that. It's a relationship. When the buy is right, the customer needs no convincing. Closing has to be profitable both for your company and for the customer. So when everything is set up in place, the customer realizes that uh, what you have is a solution to what he or she needs. Um when it's uh, they see the investment as important enough to be able to spend their resources on, um, all that stuff comes together and the buy is right. McCormick's guidance to identify the perfect customer. First off, the customer talks and you listen. The customer describes problems and solutions. The sure sign the customer is a friend is if you are included in the solution. So in this case, it's not us telling them what they need. It's them explaining what they need, realizing what they need, and allowing you to be part of helping to fulfill that need. The customer needs you. Don't abuse it. Not only are you needed, but you are trusted as well. If you abuse the relationship, if you try to take advantage and provide things that they may not necessarily need or try to uh, uh, do things in such a way where you uh, put yourself in a certain positive position for short term, um, those are things that uh, when people see that you're being taken advantage of in one way or another, that trust relationship quickly goes away. When you lose that trust, it is hard to regain it. When the customer says no, you still feel good. If there's no interest, that's clear immediately. The customer respects your time. If there's interest but rejection follows, that's also clear. The perfect customer prepares you for rejection. You never feel like you're being stiffed in one way or another. As you develop that relationship, um, most people are generally going to develop that relationship in such a way where they're trying to uh, develop that mutual benefit. Uh, customers uh, don't have the ability to waste time either. So they're not going to uh, sit there and try to string you along uh, because they got nothing better to do. Uh, if they're really interested in what you have to offer, they'll listen. But if they decide it's not for them, they will let you know. It's just part of the matter of doing business. The customer makes you better. If the customer has high visibility or exalted status in the community, the prestige rubs off on you. 
kind of that idea of guilty by association. In this case, though, it's not being guilty. It's it's being uh, a much better situation. The fringe benefits of associating with some customers often outweigh the commissions, especially if you learn to do your job better or reach a personal goal. And if nothing else, by being associated with that person and getting contacted with other people they know, you increase your customer base as well. The numbers game, perfect customers or not, you can separate your prospects into five categories. And the five categories basically range from those that don't believe in advertising at all on down to those that have no problems with advertising and the different stages that you may find people in. Uh, all of them are going to uh, have a certain degree to which uh, you're going to be able to work with them or not work with them. Uh, you definitely want to limit the time that you spend on people that don't believe in advertising at all. It's going to take a lot of convincing to be able to bring them on board. Uh, it's going to be a long, frustrating process to try to bring them on board. Uh, and again, it's that idea of setting priorities as opposed to developing an urgency here. You're going to have more success dealing with people that do have a certain belief in advertising, a certain belief in your company and your product, uh, than you are for those that don't really want to spend a lot of time listening. Um, so keep that in mind as you're dealing with prospects and going out and making calls. All successful businesses use percentages to guide decision making. Percentages are an easy to grasp way of expressing ratios where one number divided by another gives each a perspective. So the idea here is to help you to see how much success you are getting in different aspects of the sales process. We talked about uh, a 25% success rate in sales being excellent. Uh, that a one in three batting average is Hall of Fame quality in the world of baseball. Um, the idea of using ratios and percentages is going to help you to be able to see how effective you are. Some of the ratios that Tom Hopkins suggests that you track are these ones here, prospecting calls versus the hours spent prospecting. Uh, prospecting calls versus the number of appointments that are made. Appointments uh, in relation to sales. Hours worked as opposed to money earned. Prospecting calls made last month versus income this past month. Uh, all of those are good ratios to help you to see how much progress and how much success you are having. And if you see that one is lacking in one way or another, you're going to want to address that somehow. Maybe change up your strategy. Maybe change your priorities. Um, if, it, if it's something that you're spending too much time on, uh, perhaps not focus as much on that and focus on something else. Uh, percentages are a great way to be able to help you to see how well you're doing overall. Hopkins looks at the selling process as a constant increase in the numbers in your ratios. Uh, so it's that idea of tracking your progress, seeing how well you are meeting your goals. Every prospecting call does not yield a sale, yet more calls equal more chances for closing. So there are certain things, again, that you are going to have a lot of control over. How many calls you make in a day or in a week. Um, how much research that you are able to do in being able to find more people to call. Uh, those are the sorts of goals that you can, you can set, you can control, and you can continue to progress on even if uh, other goals that may be dependent on other people uh, are not being realized as much. Your sales director or sales manager sets goals for you each week, each month, and each quarter. For each of the steps in the selling cycle, be ready to set uh, specific goals for yourself as well. Again, the idea that uh, while there are certain requirements that uh, your station is going to have for you, uh, you also want to make sure that you have goals for yourself and that you are realizing the goals that you are making for yourself to help keep yourself motivated, to help keep yourself encouraged, and to see how well you are doing. 